Hi, 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 hi. So I thought I'd do the second of my vlogs about my journey to my new, well, I'm going to say bistro and art gallery now because we've actually decided a name. So in the past week, since my last vlog, there's loads happened. And what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to tag on the end or insert somewhere. I'm going to play about with it when uh, I finish recording this. Um, the I went into the actual current salon and took some video so you can see the before video. I wanted to share that with you on here. So in the last week since I filmed the first vlog, telling you how it all happened, um, this loads happened here. Um, so first thing that happened is the lovely owner, Gemma, gave me the keys so that I could get the architect in. And she was off work last Wednesday. So I called the architect and he said I can come down on Wednesday. So he came down and he's measured up the whole place. Um, and we've discussed the business, what we're going to be doing. He's going to be applying for the planning permission, um, building regulations. And we're just going to go for extended trading hours right from the start. We're going to apply for 10 till 10, seven days a week, so that we can operate it as a bistro that trades through tea time till about seven o'clock. And in the long term, maybe trade it till 10 o'clock at night for private parties, or maybe actually run it as an evening bistro for three or four nights a week. Um, loads of plans for this space, really excited and loads of plans for the space. Um, so I wanted to go in right from the get go and apply for the planning permission to get these extended hours. So 10 till 10, seven days a week. We're going to apply for the alcohol license. So we'll be doing wine, bottled, bottled beers and ciders for private parties and as a table license. So we're going to do that from the get go as well, because I think how you do anything is how you do everything. And if you're going to do something, you might as well go and get everything that you may need now or in the near future, right from the start. If you're going to be paying to put in planning permission and you're going to be paying for an architect, you might as well go for the whole hog. And then the opportunity is already there for you to be able to just step in and do what you need when you need to do it. So that's happened this week. And while I was chatting to the accountant, no, not the accountant, the architect on the Wednesday morning, he'd finished measuring up and we were chatting. I received a really exciting phone call while he was standing there. And I can't tell you about it yet. I'm going to tell you down the line, but I can't tell you about it yet. And it's like the universe planted this new and really exciting thing right on my lap, out of the blue. So I said yes, because I say yes to everything. Um, and something big is going to be happening. So that's really exciting. This is what happens when you're in high vibration and high energy, attracting the things into your life that you want to need. So I think I feel like I've done that with the Bistro and Gallery. I was calling it a coffee shop. We've changed our name for that. So I've registered it. The next thing I've done in the last week is I've registered the company. So it is going to be The Vault. So I've got the art bank here. So next door is going to be The Vault Bistro and Gallery Limited. So that's the official company name that's been registered at Company's House. So that's been done this week. So the architect's been around and I've registered the company name and I don't even own the place yet. We're still going through the process. So the bank um, is still pulling together all the information to get the bank loan. Uh, I've got to have a valuation done on this property and on the property next door. So that's in process. That's cost me £3,000 this week. Um, so I've paid out £3,000 to get the two valuations done. Um, and that's not happened yet. They will be phoning to book an appointment to do that in the next few days. So that's got to happen before we can finalise the loan from the bank. Now, when I did this place, um, it was like the money pet pit. So when I renovated the art bank, it was like the money pit. Um, I bought the house cash and I had circa £180,000 um, ish to spend. But some of that went on removal. Some of that went on living in a flat down the road for six months. Some of it went on solicitor's fees. So that was chipped away at before we even started the renovations. 
and I'd costed the renovations out and got quotes that totaled about 110,000. So I thought I was comfortable to get the place renovated. But as you start peeling back the layers in old properties, scary things happened and it ended up cost, costing quarter of a million pounds to renovate. So I took out a bridging loan, which was the easiest and quickest way of getting finance to finish the project because it was about getting a cash injection really quickly so that I could finish off the project here. So that needs to be redeemed by the 24th of January. And guess what? The bank can't make that deadline. So the penalty for not redeeming that on the deadline of the 24th of January is £12,000. So not only do I need to pay back the bridging loan, I am going to be paying £12,000 in interest. But I've pushed that back to the bank and said, you know, you've had this business plan since November. You didn't come back to me till last week. You now can't make that deadline. That's going to cost me money. You need to add that to the money that you're borrowing me. So I've pushed it back to the bank and they have come back and said, yes, they will do that. It's not going to be a problem. So that's all good. So when you're doing any sort of renovation or taking on a property and changing its use and going for a bricks and mortar business, there's always going to be additional costs. There's always going to be unexpected things that you come across. I'd built that into the business plan but hadn't built it in at that level. So you've got to try and find a solution as these things come up. So that was my solution. Um, the architect asked me how much I'd budgeted for architects and building regs and um, planning permission. And I said, 3,000 pounds. And he said, it's going to cost double that. And I'd said 3,000 pounds because I knew how much it had cost for here. But apparently, because we're going for change of use, it's going to cost more for next door. So. Hey, that's the first thing that's over budget. <laughs> I just, it's like watch up a duck's back to me these days because that's the way these things happen. But never mind, we are on track. So we've had the architect round, we've had the issue with the bridging loan and got a solution for that. So that's good. In the meantime, I've had my sister who's going to be managing the bistro and gallery for me, she's going to be the senior person. I've had her building the um, food safety files, the fire safety files, all the legal stuff and getting ahead of that stuff that you can do. Stuff like that is the things that you can do ahead of time. So the sale hasn't gone through. The bank hasn't given the money. There's a period of time now that we've got where we can look at the things that are really time consuming. And it's really time consuming to, to, to set up your food safe, safety um, systems and procedures and your staff training documents, your uh, health and safety. So I've just done my food safety this last weekend. I think it was Saturday. I did my uh, level two food safety online. So I'm up to date again. Um, I've booked myself and my sister Angela in for our national Scottish national licensee certificates because we're current licensees in England because you get 10 years on your licensee certificate but it's in England so it's no good we've got to do a Scottish one um, and then we need to look at first aid courses things like that this is what I'm saying about getting ahead of the game because the council is going to demand that you have all this in place and it could have a positive or negative impact on planning permission and things like that. If you don't do it and you leave it to the last minute, you're going to be struggling. These are the things you need to get ahead of the game with. So we've been doing that this week and probably my sister spent about 40 hours collating all the information together, looking at staff contracts, temperature checking, all of that stuff. But it's money well spent and time well spent so that you, you're not... Go in by the seat of your pants when you actually open the doors of your bricks and mortar business. It's important to have systems, policies, processes in place. When you bring new people in and train them, then you can train them properly from the get go. In any business, that's good practice. And due diligence is everything in the food industry and in the hospitality industry. So that's all of the stuff that has been happening this week. But, uh, so I haven't got huge amounts to tell. I don't think that's huge amounts. That's just a normal week for me. You might think that's huge amounts, but in the meantime, I've got a five day challenge happening in my coaching business. 
So I'm still operating my coaching business. I've got guests in my B&B. So all the businesses are pulling me from one thing to another. And I'm doing it with a smile on my face because I'm in my happy place doing what I love. So you know what? All I can say to you is enjoy life. And I've got this other big thing that's been dropped in with the phone call last week that I can't tell you about, but it sucked a lot of my time this week that I've needed to put into this other thing. But there's a return on investment in everything that you say. You either get a return on investment or not. And you've got to make the decision in life, I suppose, the things that you're going to say yes to. I say yes to anything that looks like it may have an opportunity or an impact on my business now, soon, or in the future. And I think those decisions, as you get more experienced in business, you can make those decisions quite quickly. As you're learning, you're going to make mistakes. Even as an experienced business owner, you make mistakes sometimes. But actually, not making the decision means you'll never learn. Not making mistakes means you'll never learn. And look, I've not even started this process yet of next door and there's already been barriers and I'm sure I'll make mistakes and I'll share them with you through this vlog if I do make those mistakes. So stick with me. I will be filming weekly. I'm going to tag on the end of this now the little uh, videos that I took uh, when I was walking around the salon next door and I'm talking on them so that I can share my vision with you. So I will have another vlog for you next week, telling you what's happened between now and then. In the meantime, keep everything crossed for me and get excited for me, even though you don't know what it is I'm doing. All right, see you in a week. So number 77, cloud nine, currently a salon. So I'm in the middle of the road to take this photograph. So here's me opening the door. Let's stop this and take you inside. Okay, so here's your first look. This is the salon as it is right now. Walking around, you can see it's in really good condition. Nicely decorated. There's already a counter. I want you to visualize none of this treatment stuff here and tables and chairs. It will be redecorated in artsy fashion with white walls who use as the gallery. Um, let me show you in here. This is where the old bank safe is. So I'll be taking these walls down and making the safe a feature. And then we go on through here. And there's a downstairs loo. There's two treatment rooms. This one's going to become a disabled toilet. This one's going to become the kitchen. So there'll be a small kitchen in here and then we can also cook next door at the art bank. These are the old secure boxes that the bank had and this is the access up to the one bedroom apartment which has its own door, leads to the outside. This toilet here will become the downstairs bathroom and I'm going to take you upstairs in a minute. I'm going to take you around the flat now, that's the external door, that's the entrance to the coffee shop which can be locked so it's private. This is the downstairs, what will be the bathroom, it's currently a toilet and sink and a cupboard. We're going to take the cupboard out, move the door and turn it into a luxury shower room. So I'm going to take you up these really steep stairs, <laughs> might be out of breath by the time I get here. So ignore it if I'm panting on the video. Okay, so let's get the lights on. This is the little living room. So it's small, but it's fine for two people. And we've got a big TV on the wall there. It's got plenty of room. A little uh, dining table in the corner. This is the kitchen. It's full of junk at the moment. <laughs> But we're going to put a nice shiny new kitchen in here and make that really nice. Ouch. And then this is going to be a double bedroom. So this apartment will only sleep two. It's currently being used as a treatment room. 
but it's a good size as a double bedroom. So there you go, the one bedroom apartment. So this is gonna be up for rental on hoardylets.com um, for a week, two weeks, three days, four days. Look at the stairs. There's no running down them stairs, by the way. There you go, you've had a sneaky peek. <laughs>